Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Attorney Job Vlogger, Law for the Everyday Layman. Today we continue with part 6 on the Law of Obligations and we'll be talking about pure and conditional obligations. So if you like my videos and you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button. Also, please remember that this is only for educational purposes and is not a substitute for proper legal advice or for studying and understanding the law. Okay? So now marks the discussion on the different kinds of obligations. Okay? And we start with the most basic one, the pure obligation. A pure obligation is simply one that is not subject to a condition or there is no specific date for its fulfillment, okay? There being no condition and there being no date for fulfillment, it is demandable at once, okay? So, in other words, the creditor may demand that the debtor perform his obligation right away, okay? Now, a conditional obligation, on the other hand, is an obligation that is subject to a condition. If the condition happens, then it either gives rise to rights or it extinguishes rights already acquired, okay? If the condition does not happen, then the obligation fails to come into existence and it is ineffective. But if the condition is imposed on the performance, then the creditor has the option to either refuse to proceed with the obligation or to waive the condition and proceed with the obligation, okay? Now, let's define what a condition is. A condition is a future and uncertain event, the happening of which gives rise to rights or extinguishes rights which are already acquired. Okay? It, uh, it is upon which the obligation's effectivity or extinguishment depends. Okay? While I will be uh, discussing period in the next episode, let's just give the definition now for purposes of clarity in the discussion later on. Okay? A period is a future and certain event. You are certain that it will arrive. Whereas condition, as defined earlier, is uncertain. You do not know if it is going to arrive. Okay? So, in case of a certain date, then we know that's a period. Okay? But, in case it is an event, that's where we will have to distinguish if it's a period or a condition. Okay? Now, death, for instance. Death is a certain event. Okay? Everyone is going to die. No one is immortal, as far as I know. <laughs> but anyway, no? So, uh, death is certain to come, so it will be treated as a period. So, if X binds uh, himself to pay 500 to Y, if A dies, then that is a period because it is certain that A will die. What is uncertain is if someone will die due to a certain cause. Okay? Such as if X binds himself to pay Y 500 pesos if A dies of uh, coronavirus. It is uncertain if A will die of coronavirus. Okay? So in that case, that is a condition. Okay? Now, since I mentioned the distinction between a condition and a period, there is a uh, rule in uh, pure and conditional obligations, okay? So, in case the debtor binds himself when his means enable him to do so or when his means permit him to do so, is that a period or a condition? That will be treated as a period, okay? Because the will of X in this case is clear that he binds himself to pay. He is just saying when his means permit him to do so. So, what is uncertain here is simply the duration, the period, okay? So, what is the remedy in this case? You can avail of Article 1197 and ask the court to set a period. In which case, the parties will now have to respect the period set by the court and the only time that uh, uh, the creditor can file an action to collect uh, the sum of money is if he makes a demand first and the debtor fails to pay and that's the only time he can uh, file a case for collection. Okay, So again, when the debtor binds himself, to pay when his means permit him to do so, that is a period and not a condition, okay? Speaking of wills, no, let's just take up the potestative conditions, casual conditions, and mixed conditions, okay? When we talk about potestative conditions, in general, there are two, okay? There's the simple potestative and the purely potestative 
when we say simple potestative, it refers to the will of one of the parties plus some other external act, and this is valid. Okay? But when we talk about purely potestative uh, conditions, then there are certain rules. It will now depend on uh, which party we are talking about. Because in purely potestative conditions, it, these conditions are dependent upon the sole will of one of the parties. Okay? On the sole will of one of the parties. If the purely potestative condition is dependent upon the will of the debtor, okay? the debtor, no? then the obligation and the condition shall be void. Why? Because the validity and the compliance of the obligation is left to the sole will of the debtor. Okay? In other words, the obligation cannot be demanded. I'll give you an example to make it clear. X uh, binds himself to pay uh, Y 500 pesos if he wants. Okay? And how can you demand uh, that X perform that obligation? X will simply raise the defense that no, I do not want to pay it. So it cannot be demanded because it relies solely on his will. Okay? Now, if uh, the condition, however, is a resolutory condition, this purely potestative uh, condition on the part of the debtor is valid. Why? Because this time around, the debtor is interested in the fulfillment because it will extinguish the rights. Okay? We'll talk more about resolutory conditions later on. Now, in case a purely potestative uh, condition is dependent upon the will of the creditor, okay? It's the sole will of the creditor, then the obligation is valid. Because this time around, the creditor is interested that the obligation be fulfilled. He wants the obligation to be fulfilled, okay? So, if it depends upon his, if the condition depends upon the will of the creditor, if I want, no, then it is valid because the it will simply be a uh, obligation on demand of the creditor. Okay, if I want like that, no. Now, what if? What is rather? What is a casual condition? A casual condition is one that is dep dependent either on chance or on the will of a third party. Okay. If, uh, the happening of the condition is subject to chance or subject to a, the discretion of a third party and this is valid, okay? But if a condition is mixed, then it depends partly on the will of one of the parties to the obligation and uh, and, uh, take note, and partly upon either chance or the will of a third party, okay? Again, partly on will of one of the parties to the obligation and partly on chance or the will of a third party. In this case, the obligation is valid. However, both must be complied with. That's why I said end. Okay? So the will of the one of the parties must be complied with and the chance or will of the third person must likewise be complied with. Now let's give an example no? just to uh, make it clear. Let's say X binds himself to give 500 pesos to Y as soon as he receives funds from the sale of his house in Makati. Okay? That is a mixed condition. Why? It's valid because it depends upon the will of the debtor and the uh, uh, certain other factors, no? such as acceptability of the price of the sale and uh, the availability of a buyer. Okay? So it's not just dependent on the will of the debtor X in this case. However, please take note, in case X says that he will give 500 to Y uh, as soon as he receives funds from the sale of his property in Makati, if he finally decides to sell the house, then that is purely potestative and that is void. Okay? It's void because it depends solely upon the will of the debtor. He can choose not to sell the house. And there is no way for you to demand the performance of the obligation. Because, again, it depends on the will of the debtor. Okay? So the rule is, in case the potestative condition relies solely on the will of the debtor, then the obligation is void. Okay? But, 
take note. If the obligation is a pre-existing one, the, in that it doesn't depend on the condition for its existence, okay? then only the condition shall be void. The obligation will still be valid. Okay? Why? Because it was already pre-existing. It doesn't depend on its existence on the condition. Take, for instance, my example earlier on the on X giving 500 as soon as he receives funds from the sale of his house. That is uh, dependent on the condi uh, condition for its existence. To make it a pre-existing obligation, just make it so that X owes the person he is paying, no, and he is paying that 500 as uh, by virtue of a pre-existing debt. Okay, In, uh, let's reword it to make it clear. No, X promised to pay the loan which he took from Y of 500 pesos as soon as he receives funds from the sale of his property in Makati if he decides to sell okay in that case what will happen is that only the condition is void the obligation to pay y is still existing because it came first no x just added a condition which should now be disregarded and the obligation to pay will just be set to a period okay it is up to the parties to go to the courts to ask the courts to set a period unless of course they agree on a period already within which x must pay Okay, now we can move on to the uh, major distinction in uh, conditional obligations, those of uh, suspensive and resolutory conditions. Okay, now if you remember uh, conditional obligations, these are obligations that are subject to a condition, and uh, upon the happening of the condition, the, the rights either uh, arise or rights are extinguished. Okay. So, if rights arise, then that is a suspensive condition, okay? And the root word of uh, suspensive is suspend, okay? In other words, since uh, suspensive conditions give rise to rights, what are suspended are the demandability of the obligation, the performance of the prestation, and the rights uh, arising from the obligation, okay? They are held in suspense, until the condition happens. In other words, you can't enforce, you can't demand, okay, until the condition happens. But does this mean that the parties have no rights? Not necessarily. The creditor has the right to bring actions or to file cases, no? To preserve his right, no? He can prevent the debtor from transferring or concealing the thing. Or the creditor can even uh, annotate his uh, claim or his right on the title, no? The debtor, on the other hand, has the right to recover what he may have paid by mistake under the provisions of solution in debity, okay? So, uh, in case the condition has not yet happened, then the obligation is not yet due and demandable. So, the debtor does not have to pay yet. In case he has paid, he may now recover what he may have paid by mistake, okay? That is uh, before the condition happens. But what if the condition already happens? The creditor can now demand that the obligation be performed and the debtor can now be compelled to comply with his obligation. Okay? Now we can talk about uh, retroactive effects. Okay? Let's first talk about uh, real obligations or obligations to give, no? Which involve a thing as distinguished from real contracts which are perfected by delivery. Okay? Those two are different, huh? And it's also different from a real right which is enforceable against the, against the whole world, no? So, uh, in real obligations to give, the effects of a conditional obligation retroact or go back to that point when the parties first agreed to enter into the contract. Why? Because the condition is only an accidental element, no? So, so uh, in obligations to give, the effects of the conditional obligation retroact to the date that the parties first constituted the obligation and uh, any uh, right of action to enforce the uh, obligation or causes of action, etc. are counted from that date that the parties first agreed on the uh, uh, obligation. Okay? Now, uh, that rule on retroactivity will not apply in two cases. So, these are the exceptions. Okay? First, if the obligation involves a real contract, 
Why? Because real contracts are perfected by mere delivery. And since they are only perfected at delivery, there is nothing to retroact to beyond that point of delivery. The rights will arise from that moment of delivery. Okay? Now, second example is when the obligation is to be performed successively or in intervals. Okay? Such as in a contract of lease, which may be paid monthly. No? So, uh, in that case, there is also no retroactive effect. So that was for uh, real obligations. What about personal obligations? Those obligations to do or not to do. What is the retroactive effect rule? No, The rule is that it is the courts that will determine if there is any retroactive effect or even what the retroactive effect is. Okay, It's up to the courts. Okay, In reciprocal obligations, the uh, retroactivity rule is uh, like this. No? In case the object earns fruits, and in case the price earns, earns interests, then the fruits and the interests will be mutually compensated. They will be set off. Okay? The purpose is for convenience. So the parties do not have to render a mutual accounting. So in other words, if this party is bound to deliver the object, he no longer has to give this other party the fruits. And this party no longer has to give the interests when he gives the price. Okay? Because fruits and interests are set off. Okay, but in unilateral obligations where only one party has a duty to perform, the debtor may retain the fruits until the point of delivery. Okay, so there is generally no retroactive effect. Okay, that's the rule unless the parties otherwise stipulate. Okay, so the parties may stipulate that the fruits received by the debtor even before delivery may be delivered to the creditor. Okay. Now, let's go to another rule. What if the condition says that an event must happen at a determinate time? Okay? Then an obligation will be extinguished. Okay? There is no liability. If or when the time expires without the event happening or it is sure that the event will not happen even if the time has not yet expired. Okay? So let's give an example. No? So let's say X binds himself to give 10,000 pesos to uh, B. If B marries C uh, before B reaches the age of 23. Okay? So what if B marries C uh, at, at the age of 21? No? Then X will be liable because the condition has happened. Okay? Since the condition has happened, the obligation is effective and X is liable. But if uh, B marries C at the age of 23, 24, or uh, higher, then X is not liable. Why? Because the event, uh, the condition is that the event will happen at a determinate time. Since the event did not happen because the time had expired, okay, remember the condition is that B must marry C before 23, no? Since the event did not happen at the determinate time, now the obligation is extinguished and X is no longer liable. Okay, let's give uh, the last scenario. What if uh, C, okay, C dies while B is 20 years old? Then of course X is not liable. Why? Because this time it is sure that the event constituting the condition will no longer happen. B can no longer marry C who has already died. So, X is not liable. Okay? So, that is the positive aspect of the rule. Let's go to the negative aspect. What if the condition states that an event should not happen at a determinate time? Okay? Should not happen. Then the obligation will become effective when the time expires or when it is sure that the event cannot occur. Okay? Let's give an example again. X binds himself to give 10,000 pesos to B if B is not yet married to C on December 30. Okay? Not yet married to C on December 30. So let's say B marries C on or before December 30. Is X liable? No, X is not liable. Okay? What if it's already December 31? Okay, one day after uh, December 30, and B is not yet married. Is X liable? Yes, he's liable because this time, the time has expired. Okay, it's already after December 30. And finally, if C dies on, uh, let's say, a month before, on November 20, 
okay? Then, uh, she, without having married uh, B, no? Then X is also liable because it is sure that the event will not happen, okay? So, uh, that's it for those rules, no? Let's go to a very important rule, the doctrine of constructive fulfillment, no? Under this doctrine, the condition will be deemed to have been uh, fulfilled, no? And the obligation becomes pure if the debtor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment, okay? So the requisites for this doctrine to apply is first, of course, the condition must be a suspensive condition. Next, the debtor must have actually prevented the happening of the condition. And finally, the debtor's act must be voluntary, okay? In this case, if the debtor stops the condition from happening, the obligation becomes a pure one and can be demand, demanded by the creditor, okay? Let's go now to the rules on loss, improvement, or deterioration of the thing, okay? In order for these rules to apply, first, it only applies to a real obligation, an obligation to give, okay? And it must also involve a determinate thing, meaning it's physically segregated, no? Or particularly designated, no? Next, it must be an obligation with a suspensive condition which has been fulfilled. Okay, and finally, the loss, uh, improvement, or deterioration must happen while the condition is pending or has not yet happened. Okay? Now, let's go to the first rule. If the thing is lost uh, without the fault of the debtor, then the obligation is extinguished. Why? Because the debtor is not at fault. But if the thing is lost due to the fault of the debtor, then is liable for damages, okay? And uh, the law gives us a definition of loss, no? When it can no longer be recovered, no? Uh, you just look that up na lang, okay? Second rule on deterioration, no? In case of deterioration without the fault of the debtor, then the creditor is the one who bears the impairment. Why? Because the deterioration was not due to the fault of the debtor, Okay? And uh, in case the, de the deterioration is due to the debtor's fault, then the creditor has the option of either uh, choosing rescission or specific performance with damages in either case. Okay? Because the creditor may still want the thing even though it has deteriorated. And finally, on improvement, improvement due to uh, nature of the thing or due to passage of time, in yours to the credit or, or benefit of the creditor okay so the creditor benefits but if the improvement is because of the expense of the debtor then he just has the right of a usufructuary okay just uh, if you want to learn more about usufructuary and the contract of usufruct please just refer to my uh, episode on that no i have a video on usufructuary and usufruct no just look for it in the playlist of security and credit transactions, okay? So those are the rules on loss, improvement, or uh, deterioration of the thing, okay? Now we can talk about resolutory conditions, okay? Resolut resolutory conditions are if uh, they are attached to an obligation, no? If they happen, then the rights that have already been acquired are simply extinguished, okay? In a resolutor, in an obligation which is subject to a resolutory condition, the obligation is immediately demandable. Rights are already acquired. It's just that when the resolutory condition happens, the rights are extinguished and uh, the parties are now bound to the duty of mutual restitution. In other words, they must return to each other whatever they may have received by virtue of the obligation. So what if the condition does not happen? Then rights become consolidated and they become absolute. Okay, there's no more need to return if the condition does not happen. But if the condition happens, then the obligation is extinguished and mutual restitution now applies. Okay? Now, in case of uh, in case the resolutory condition happens, the rules on loss, improvement, and deterioration will now apply to the party who is bound to return the thing. Okay? 
So uh, let's just review now uh, after all we have talked about no what are the obligations that are demandable at once it's the pure obligations and the obligations that are subject to a resolutory period or condition because remember they are immediately demandable subject to the threat of extinction upon the happening of the condition okay finally let's talk about uh, impossible conditions no when we talk about impossibility here it can be a physical or legal impossibility physical impossibility is, just, is simple no it just cannot be done but uh, in legal impossibility that refers to uh, the thing or uh, prestation being contrary to law morals uh, customs public policy public order okay and in case the obligation is subject to an impossible condition then the obligation itself is void okay the obligation itself why because the debtor clearly knows that the obligation cannot be for cannot be performed no he has the malicious or perverse intention not to perform the, the obligation at all okay the impossibility must exist at the time of the creation of the obligation okay for instance no if uh, x binds himself to pay uh, 500 pesos uh, to y no when uh, he, when um, he can uh, when travel to jupiter is uh, possible no then uh, that is an impossible condition because foreseeably there is no uh, way you can travel to jupiter no but okay take note that is an impossible condition and the obligation is void but it may be valid how will it be valid if there is a period for performance such as when x uh, obligates himself to give 500 to y in case he can travel to jupiter within a period of one year okay because in that case the the debtor now has an intention to uh, allow the event to happen okay contrasted with the earlier instance where there was no intent at all to uh, comply with the obligation okay the, it will become more obvious now when uh, when the condition becomes more and more ridiculous no like i will give you 500 pesos when pigs fly or 500 pesos uh, when you are able to raise the dead okay again the obligation in that case is void but if the there is a time set no for performance like i will give you uh, 500 pesos when you are able to raise the dead within a period of 10 years then that obligation is valid okay because there may have been uh, a desire to see if the cre the creditor could actually find a way to raise the dead no unlike the first instance without a period for performance it was motivated by a perverse intent to not perform the obligation at all okay so uh the following are the rules so let's just summarize the rules if there's a period to comply then the obligation is valid okay but if the condition is negative such as if it's uh, not to do an impossible thing we just disregard the condition okay uh, the obligation is one that is uh, pure okay um, like uh, let's give an example no I will give you 500 pesos if uh, you do not sprout wings and fly okay then that's pure and demandable because you don't have to comply with the condition no and uh, if the obligation is pre-existing no there's a pre-existing obligation which does not depend on the condition for its existence then the obligation is valid and only the condition is void okay such as when x borrowed 500 pesos from y and uh when y is about to pay he tells x that i will pay you when pigs fly then that since there's a pre-existing obligation of loan it is only the payment the performance of payment by y that is subject to the impossible condition then the condition will be disregarded okay the obligation will still be valid okay uh, finally, if the obligation is divisible, no, you can divide it into parts. I'll be talking about divisible obligations in uh, uh, the next few videos, no. But uh, to be uh, to give you a head start, uh, 
divisibility pertains to capability of partial performance okay now when the obligation is divisible only the part that is subject to the impossible condition shall be void the part that can be performed legally will still be valid okay so uh, let's say uh, i will pay you i don't know um, i will sell you my car in shabu for uh, 200,000 pesos in that case that is uh, not divisible because you do not know what amount of the money will uh, pertain to the certain thing no whether it's the car or, sh or shabu in that case the whole obligation is void but if i say i will uh, sell you my car for 150,000 pesos and shabu for uh, 50,000 pesos then uh, that obligation is divisible and only the obligation involving the shabu will be uh, void okay the obligation for the car is still valid okay so that's it for pure and conditional obligations i hope you may have picked up a thing or two from this discussion and i hope to see you next time see you bye